All right, everyone take a deep breath. With the ringing of this bell, I bring us from the work day into a higher realm of thinking about nonviolence. And I do this not as the carpenter leader of Zen space makers, but now I take off my uniform spiritually and I become a practitioner of nonviolence. And I welcome into the space today, Dr. Ed Tick. Welcome, Ed. Thank you very much, Sander. I'm honored and pleased to be with you and to be united with Nonviolence Works. We are in sacred space together. Exactly, exactly. So we wanted to do a quick video with you today to get to know more about your new book and to let people know that we'll be doing a holiday event with you coming up on December 14th and they'll be able to interact with you and learn more about the book. So first of all, Show us the book and tell us about the book. Greetings, my friends out there. Uh, I'm honored to be with you and to be with Sander and uh, Nonviolence Works. This is my new book. Wow, now it's called Coming Home in Vietnam. Most people probably would think it should be <laughs> Coming Home from Vietnam. Tell us about that title. The title is pithy, but very important because of course, from all of our works, we struggle to bring our warriors home. Uh, I've been working with our warriors since the end of the Vietnam War. So I've been working with the military and veterans for over 40 years. And our veterans in large part do not and cannot come home from war because we don't have the practices to bring them home. We don't have the techniques to bring them home. We turn them into warriors through intensive training that deconstructs the civilian and replaces it with a military identity. And then we send them into uh, service, very often these days into combat, not just in the wars people know about, but all around the world. We have military in presently in over 140 countries, and we are still at war. There are secret wars and black ops going on now. So America is consistently at war Folks don't know this, but America is about 245 years old. We've been in armed conflict 225 of those years. People only think about the big well-known wars. So we are a country made by war from our origins to the present. We do an extraordinary job in creating a very, very strong and dominant military force. And then we do almost nothing to discharge the militarism in the warriors to take the war out of them. Mm -hmm. So when they come home, the war is still in them. And then we have all of the consequences of domestic violence, sexual abuse, drug and alcohol abuse, uh, psychic numbness, nightmares, flashbacks, all of that. That is still the war going on in their minds. And our mainstream techniques used by the Veterans Administration and most therapists don't take the war out of them. Don't return their psyches, their hearts and souls to a nonviolent condition. Working how, with our veterans. How do you do that? Well, one way is to go back to Vietnam. <laughs> and ah, that's what which you've done, right? You've, you've done that a couple of times. I've done, I've been doing it for 20 years. Wow, how many times? Well, 19 times. Uh, I only stopped because the pandemic stopped us all. Ah, okay. Wow. Um, so, but there are many significant ways for bringing our warriors home. Uh, realizing that modern Western psychology doesn't know how to do it, and psychiatry certainly doesn't know how to do it. I have been studying and practicing worldwide warrior traditions from ancient times and from other cultures in modern times. And in another talk, we can share the principles and practices I've brought from other traditional cultures for war healing. They're really profound. Uh, and they are known around the world uh, because there's been so much war. Humanity wouldn't be here if we weren't been hadn't been able to do some healing from all of the wars. Uh, that being said, I have been searching for the most holistic and comprehensive ways of bringing our warriors home. Uh, of course, the Vietnam generation is my generation and the Vietnam War was my generation's war. So uh, I began working with them and have a special connection to that war. And this nonviolence work is actually my form of alternative service. 
I didn't have to serve during the war. I was applying for conscientious objector status, and then I didn't have to serve at all. And so I was looking for my form of national service. And after the war, becoming a, a therapist for veterans became my form of service. I began leading the journeys back to Vietnam in 2000, looking for the most holistic and comprehensive ways of taking the war out of people. I honestly didn't know what I would find when I began traveling there because we don't know much about Vietnam. We don't know their history, their culture, their spirituality, how the war affected them. So I wanted to meet and know the Vietnamese people. I wanted to research what the war did to them and how they were healing their war wounds. And I wanted to bring the two sides together. Right. So beautiful, a beautiful African proverb says, my enemy is someone whose story I have not yet heard. Right. Yeah. Let's yeah. go to Vietnam and meet the former foe and exchange stories and help each other heal and do atonement work to um, heal the wounds that we've left behind. And let's see what kind of healing can occur. So I've been doing this practice for 20 years. We do use the principles of many principles of nonviolence. Um, encountering the other who was a former foe and walking into the wound together unarmed and open your heart and your mind and share stories. And if anger or pain or rage come up, you don't act on that. You notice it and you own it in yourself and realize what's coming up is in you, not from them. And we discharge it. Uh, there's so many uh, other principles. Uh, in the minds of veterans, the war hasn't, or Vietnam hasn't changed. They're afraid to go back. They're waiting to arrest me. They're waiting to punish me. Um, the, the jungles and the villages are still burning. Well, we'll go to Vietnam and see that they're not. Mm -hmm. Immediately, you can't tell somebody that, and they can't even look at pictures. That just gives a little support. But I was on this battlefield, and it looked like the moonscape when I left. And now it's green and growing and the people are well and they're farming and growing their, their crops again. It replaces the traumatic imagery. The Vietnamese welcome our veterans at, this is quotes from them, and this is nonviolence at work. Uh, they are, um, the Vietnamese dominant religion is Buddhism. So Zen peacemakers, we're there, Zen space makers, um, they do. So some quotes from Vietnamese veterans who fought against Americans. We are brothers and sisters who survived the same hell. From now on, Vietnamese and American veterans must be the lips and the tongue of the same mouth telling the world the same story. Wow. Yeah. We grieve that you could not, that you cannot come home in America and we know of your suffering. So please keep coming back to Vietnam so you can come home here and we can heal you with our love. Wow. One more. You feel guilt and responsibility for what you did. We don't blame you. You were good warriors. This is a, a Buddhist also. You were good warriors who were, did what your nation asked you to do to protect them. You didn't know it was not true. You didn't know it was wrong. We honor you as good warriors. The only people we have disagreement with were the politicians and corporations that sent you here, but not you. You didn't know. So welcome home in Vietnam. Wow. It, it's extraordinary. Yeah. Extraordinary. I, I facilitate talking circles between their veterans and ours and scouts on are sometimes people who literally were trying to kill each other in the war over the same little hill, meet and fall into each other's arms and laugh and cry and hug and joke. Ha ha, you were a bad shot and you missed me. Ah ha ha, well, if we had killed each other back then, we couldn't live to this wonderful day to be friends. Yeah. So these are just vignettes, but I, I'm, after 20, 19 years there, 19 trips and uh, about a year and a half of my life over there, guiding these journeys, it's extraordinary. It has lessons for the entire world about peacemaking, healing, embracing the principles of nonviolence to bring uh, healing from the past and transformation in our relationships in the present. Wow, Ed, thank you so much. I know you have 
other things in your schedule today, but I'm going to just say that you gave a powerful talk this year at Nonviolence Works, our conference on Gandhi's birthday, October 2nd. And you're, you're gonna be a big powerful part of it in the future, uh, in 2022. So Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And we'll see you again on December 14th, 7 p.m. We're gonna do a big book party with you and we're going to try to get as many people there and we'll try to send this video out to as many people who can see it because this is part of our work at Zen Space Makers, but also nonviolence.works. But it's it's really trying to be authentic peacemakers. And that's what you are, Ed. So God bless you. Thank you so much. And thank you. And God bless you and your works and your greater vision for helping bring peace to all of us.